Uh, let's stick with Europe. I'm joined in the studio now by arch Eurosceptic Conservative MEP Daniel Hannan and from Strasbourg by staunch European and former Lib Dem leader Charles Kennedy. Welcome to you both, Dan Hannan, to you first. David Cameron says you have to be ready to lose a battle in order to win the war. Can he still win this war? Well, his declared objectives would leave Britain pretty much where we are now. We'd still be in the common agricultural policy, we'd still be in the common fisheries policy, the common foreign policy, the European uh, arrest warrant. So, I mean, the, the negotiating aims which we just heard Nick setting out wouldn't fundamentally change anything. It'd be quite easy for the government to declare victory on all of those things. We'd still be pretty much full members of this dwindling, declining customs union. Charles Kennedy, the danger from your point of view as someone who wants to stay in, that is, if Mr Cameron gets only cosmetic changes, the chances of a vote to leave the European Union then increases, doesn't it? Hypothetically, it probably does, Andrew, yes. But we've got two big things to get through first in domestic UK politics before we even reach and renegotiation, far less a referendum. One is, are we going to have a United Kingdom by this time next year, following the September referendum in Scotland? Secondly, are the Conservatives, after the May 2015 election uh, next year, are they going to be in a position to actually pursue sure. a negotiation? In other words, are they going to be a majority government or even a minority government? These are very big ifs before we even reach right. the European conundrum well, itself. All right, but for the, sake, for the sake of this morning, let's assume the answer to both is yes. The UK stays intact and against the polls, they're mm. saying this morning, against the polls, Mr Cameron forms an overall majority after the election. There is a danger if he doesn't bring back much okay. that people will vote, correct? Well, there's that danger, and I see a lot of the, the British press comment this morning is saying this could well be a rerun of the, the Harold Wilson-led negotiation of the 1970s, a bit cosmetic, but enough to say we've got new terms and you should uh, go with it. I think that what's uh, different, however, is, and this is really an appeal, if you like, can't just be left to the Liberal Democrats and the coalition government to, to make this case in our own, an awful lot of individuals and interest groups, the length and breadth of the land, are going to start having to be prepared to put their head above the parapet on the fundamental, do you want Britain to remain in the European Union, yes right. or no? Are you willing to put your money where your mouth is? Are you right. willing to put your public reputations on the line? Okay. We're not getting enough of that at the moment, and it's getting very dangerously close to closing time. All right, Dan Hannum. Mr Cameron won't get away with cosmetic changes, will he? That won't satisfy his party. He'd be rumbled. Why do you keep putting this in terms of his party? You and, I'm afraid, all of the commentators, right? If it's unacceptable to Tory backbenchers, it's because the system is working and Tory backbenchers are reflecting what their constituents say. You were quoting earlier the opinion polls today. This is not some internal Conservative row. A majority of people in the country are unhappy with our present terms. They can see that there is a huge wide world beyond the oceans and we have uh, confined ourselves to this tiny trade block at the western tip of the Eurasian landmass. There is a huge debate to be had about whether as trading maritime people we could be doing better outside. And to be putting it in terms of danger, as you and Charles Kennedy were just saying, it's democracy, it's not danger, it's trusting yeah, people. Yeah, but the only person offering a referendum is the Prime Minister at the right. moment. He needs to win the election to deliver that. And it does have serious consequences for his party, your party. That's what I'm talking about. And it does have serious... Well, do you know what? He, my point I, to you... Right, I'm very proud to, to be part of a party that, that is offering to trust people my, on this. My point to you is that if he only gets cosmetic changes and says we should still stay in, he cannot carry his party. Right, but it's actually not really ultimately going to be his party, is it? It's going to be the electorate as a whole that has to decide whether the changes are substantive. And you know, everything that we were hearing just now from my good friend David Liddington is about basically staying out of future integration, protecting the role of the non-Euro countries. People are upset about what's going on today with the European Union. They can see right. laws being passed by people they can't vote for. They can see our traditional friendships overseas uh, prejudiced. And they can see that as a, uh, a, 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 as a union, the European Union has just put in charge in the top slot somebody who wants the United States of Europe into which will eventually be dragged as some kind of province if this goes ahead. Well, Charles Kennedy, um, Jean-Claude Juncker is a federalist. You're a federalist. Uh, why did the Lib Dems oppose him? 
Well, we shared the view, and we talked about this earlier in the week in your daily programme, we shared the view that whilst you take account of what the U members of the European Parliament say, ultimately the choice of the presidency of the Commission should be the political leaders, the governmental leaders at a national level. Uh, and that's why we went down the route we did. It was more to do with the system than the individual. Although what I would add about all of this is that you also need to bear in mind, I mean, Daniel, in a phrase he shouldn't be, I respect his, him personally and I respect the integrity of his views, as I think he does mine. But, you know, to dismiss uh, the European Union, you know, as a, a small uh, trading block globally, when you've got the United States of America, China and other countries acknowledging its importance, uh, it really is Every Walter Mitty Every continent land. on the planet and I is think now you'll growing find economically, is. except Every Europe, on we are in the wrong place. Now growing economically. Are we closer? Are we closer, well, uh, Dan? Let me go we, back to that, that, that. That's a are huge closer, argument in itself. Dan, let me go right. back Dan to Hannan, that. are we closer to an exit as a result of what happened last week? Yes. Because? Because the idea that we could secure substantive reforms, that we could get uh, uh, powers, significant powers back, that we could be a sovereign country within a looser, more flexible European Union, the middle way that Janan was talking about, which I think does appeal to a lot of people, has plainly been closed off. The choice is not going to be between a federal Europe and this lovely Europe of Nations idea. The second of those things is not on the menu. The, the, we have to face up to the actual European Union that has taken shape on our doorstep. Are we going to be part of that? Or are we going to have a much more semi-detached, looser relationship with it, which we could either achieve by a, a unilateral repatriation of power, or we can leave by leaving, or we can achieve by leaving and doing a Swiss-type deal from the outside, where we're right. in the free market but outside the political union? Charles Kennedy, this debate is just never-ending. It's gone on and on and bedeviled British prime ministers and British parties for as long as I can remember. Uh, I mean, shouldn't the Lib Dems change their stance on the referendum yet again and just a, let's have this in, out and referendum and have it decided one way or the other? Well, no, I mean, our position remains clear. If there's a constitutional issue put before us in terms of treaty changes, then you have a referendum. Why not um, now? Why not in or out now? I've argued 20 years Why ago. Why not now? During... Why not in or out well, now? Well, Andrew, I'm probably the wrong person to ask because now it was a European spokesman during the period of Maastricht 20 years ago, I argued for and voted for a referendum on Maastricht because I thought that was a constitutional treaty. Anything that makes the Queen a citizen of the European Union, surely it's got constitutional implications. Ones I welcomed, but it should have gone to the vote. Anyway, 20 years on, we are where we are. And what we need to do is establish common vocabulary. You talk about federalism. What do we mean, not just as British Liberal Democrats, but most of the people who are operating in the European Parliament and the institution across the road that brings me here at the moment, the Council of Europe, a different but related entity. They mean by federalism, decentralization of powers, not a Brussels super state, but actually the kind of decentralization that maintains national characteristics and pools resources and sovereignty where it makes well, sense. Well, I Mr. Think that's Kennedy, let me, you, you've mentioned... Are, but that's well, not let me the ask you about well, that. Mr. You, Mr. Well, Mr. Juncker, who is now going to be in charge of uh, the Brussels Commission, he believes in a single EU foreign policy, a federal police and a federal army, an EU-wide minimum wage and EU-wide taxes. Now, you said to me on the Daily Politics earlier this week that you like the sound of Juncker federalism. Is that what you believe in, too? Is it good to you? No, and I think that the new president of the Commission is going to be rather disappointed if he puts forward those views, because although we only had Hungary voting with us on his nomination, I think if you go to other countries, France, Germany, Poland, in Scandinavia, all over the place, they are not going to buy that kind of menu. What they mean by federalism is the way that I've just outlined it, the continental concept, also the North American concept, Canada and the United States. Well, excuse of federalism. me, the federal that government in North America. The federal governments of North America have an, government have an army. They have an army. They have a federal police force. They have uh, federal taxation. 
Yes, but in terms of the political institutions, which is what we're discussing here, you can have the supranational, which is the European level, while still having the very All vibrant right. national, and indeed, as we're practicing right. in the United yeah. Kingdom, right. the uh, subnational, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. All right. Very brief uh, final word from you, Dan Hannum. That's ultimately going to be the choice. The European Union is not a fixed proposition. It's an evolving dynamic. We can see what direction it's going in towards all of the things that you were just outlining. Do we want to be part of that? I suspect Charlie Kennedy would have loved to have had a referendum. I can't help noticing that his party has gone badly all downhill right. since he, who was a proper Democrat, was running it. We're going to have to leave it there. Charles Kennedy, Dan Hannum, thank you for joining me this morning.